Uh, but we're in a series called Resilient Faith. Everybody say Resilient Faith. And what I want to do today is I want to talk about how we can increase our faith. Everybody say increase. Because I would imagine that a lot of you here, you want to increase your faith. You don't want to be the same that you are, that you walked in. You want to leave increased in some manner. And so I want to give you some practical things that you can do to increase your faith. I think in order for us to have the resilient faith that we're talking about, uh, our faith needs to increase. If you had the same faith that you had when you first came to Jesus or you first started attending church, you may not be able to handle some of life's situations that arise today. One thing that we could probably agree on is the world is getting crazier, right? Like it is not, like it's crazy now, but it's not done getting crazy. It's going to increase in difficulty and increase in craziness. And so our faith needs to increase to be able to handle the chaos of the world. And so uh, Teresa shared this definition of resilient faith, and I want to share it with you because it needs to be repeated. Resilient faith is complete confidence in God that helps us to be able to withstand or recover from difficult situations. That's resilient faith. And in order to get to that resilient faith, our faith needs to increase. I think that a lot of churches fail or split because their faith doesn't increase to the level that it needs to to withstand what's happening in the world today. I think a lot of people leave church or abandon Christianity because their faith isn't increasing over time and life circumstances just overpower them. Our job is to increase our faith so that way we can handle circumstances. I've had difficult times in this year. Uh, last year was like really good, but this year like started off, it was just rough. And I'm like, come on, man. Like last year was really good. Can't we just continue this? Nope, but it's been hard, and it's been difficult, and if my faith wasn't increased over time, even during that good time of just building my faith up, I'm not sure if I can handle the hard situations that have come up recently. Our faith needs to increase, and so I say it's practical and it's simple, but if we were honest enough with each other, it's not so simple, and they're not so practical because if they were, everybody would be doing them, and we wouldn't be struggling as we are. And so today, I want you to leave encouraged that you could do these things, and that they're simple and practical, and they're easy enough for anyone to build these habits in their life to have resilient faith. Everybody say, increase. So I got six things I want to share with you, and I'll get you out of here in two days. Look, it's revival. God can do whatever. <laughs> I'm also kidding. I'm not going to be here for two days, so I got it. <laughs> Shh, don't encourage him. The first thing that we need to do to increase our faith is change how we think. It starts with our minds, really. If our minds don't adapt to the things that we believe in, focus on Jesus, then the rest of these things that I'm going to mention are going to be hard to do. It starts with how we think. In Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I read this in a commentary as I was studying these things, and I just thought it was really good, and I wanted to share it with you. John Whitmere said, as one's mind keeps on being made new by spiritual input of God's word, prayer, and Christian fellowship, his lifestyle keeps on being transformed. Our thoughts need to be transformed by God to be able to handle the mental pressure that this world puts us in, to be able to handle the situations in this world our mental state has to be focused on God. 
We can't handle chaos if we don't know how to fight chaos. And we fight chaos with the Word of God, prayer, and Christian fellowship. Colossians 3, 2 through 3 says, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Paul would repeat himself in 2 Corinthians 4.18, as we look not to things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The things that we see right now are temporary and will not last long. But the things of God are eternal and will last forever. And so our mind needs to be focused on the things of Jesus and the Word of God. Every thought needs to be taken captive and pushed back to Jesus. Again, if we can't get the thinking right, then it's going to be difficult to do the rest. The second thing that we can do to increase our faith is by what we hear. Everybody say, hear. What we hear. Proverbs 15.5 says, Let the wise hear and increase in learning and the one who understands obtain guidance. Let the wise hear and increase their learning. A lot of you are tuning in to Sunday service. A lot of you are here listening to the Word of God, and your uh, knowledge will increase while doing this. What you hear matters. Your faith is increased by listening to things that line up with the Word of God that are true. Your faith will decrease if you're not listening to things like that on a regular basis. So coming to church on Sunday is great, but we got to be doing this through the week. It doesn't end when you leave here. It begins when you leave here. How are you going to listen to the Word of God this week? This also is about worshiping listening to other things that are Christ-centered and not necessarily uh, world-centered. If we start listening to the world, then our ideas and thoughts are going to change. I tell teenagers this all the time. If you put garbage in, you're going to produce garbage. It matters on who we listen to and what we listen to. There are a lot of people out there currently that are trying to twist the word of God to say something that it's not saying, and they're leading people astray. It matters on what we hear. Our faith comes from hearing the word of God. Jesus said this in John 5:24. It says, truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes, hearing will increase your faith. It will increase your faith. The third thing that we can do is see. Everybody say, see. Hebrews 12 2 says, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking to Jesus. Our sight needs to be focused on Jesus. If we're looking at the world for answers, we're not going to get them. We need to look to Jesus for our answers. And if we're focused on the storm that is surrounding us, we're going to be consumed by that storm. I want you to think about Peter in this moment. There was a moment where Peter saw Jesus walking on water, and Jesus told him to come out on the water. And Peter Peter stepped out on the water, and I don't know if I could do that because I'm not a good swimmer, and I need, like, arm floaties on me, and I need some kind of protection to step out there, and uh, that might be a faith issue. So um, Peter steps out of the boat, and his focus is locked on Jesus. 
And the moment his eyes left Jesus and looked at the storm, he began to sink. If you focus on what's happening around you more than you're focusing on God, you will succumb to that struggle. That struggle will defeat you. It will fail. It comes by seeing, not just focusing on God, but also seeing the works that God has produced. A long time ago, I went on my first, first missionary trip to Africa, and uh, it was crazy. And let me, let me just say that it was crazy because the only other place that I had been to up to that point was St. Louis. Okay? Like, St. Louis, to me, is still part of Illinois somewhat. Like, it's not even, you're like, well, Corey, you did go into another state. But no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm hopping countries at this point. Like, I'm on an eight-hour flight. Uh, I was actually on this flight, and I leaned over to someone, and I was like, hey, why do they have four engines? They're like, in case one goes out. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, does that happen? <laughs> but I remember landing in Africa, and I was overcome by just the culture and the difference of the culture. I was, like, I was wearing sunglasses. I was so scared. I was just sitting on the couch just staring. At one point, I was so, like, in culture shock that I swore I thought I saw a lion <laughs> in our hotel. And I told someone, I was like, dude, I think that was a lion. And they're like, lions aren't here. And I'm like, look, I saw a lion. That was my experience. Eventually, I was able to step out and preach and pray, and uh, I got used to everything that was going on, and there's a lot more funny stories, but I want to share a story with you that increased my faith that day. We uh, went to a church in the bush on a mountainside, and the rumor was that this specific area had never seen a white person before. So many thoughts going through my head right now. because, But, so they had they seen us come up, and the kids started trying to pick the freckles off my skin. Because they didn't understand that that was part of my skin. They had seen them, and they were trying to pick them off. But the craziest thing happened to a blind lady. And uh, we were praying, and Terry was praying for this blind lady, and I was praying for this blind lady. And we were just asking that God would heal her sight. And uh, God did. God healed her sight in that moment. And her reaction was the craziest thing I had ever seen up until that point. She was jumping up and down, and she was screaming in her native tongue. I didn't understand what was going on. And Terry's trying to figure out if she can see, so he's holding up two fingers, and she's holding up two fingers. And we're all screaming. She's crying. It was crazy. But my faith was increased because I saw God do a miracle. Now, some of you, you probably haven't necessarily seen God do a miracle. Yeah, give it up. Some of you probably haven't seen a miracle, but you have seen God move in your life or in someone else's life that can increase your faith. What we see matters. Peter stepped out of the boat focused on Jesus, walked on water, but his focus changed. If your focus changes from on Jesus to onto the storm, the storm will win. The fourth point, and I've only got two more after this, so we've got about three hours, is our faith will increase by how we talk. Everybody say, talk. And this isn't necessarily about sharing words of encouragement with people and those different things, but more of sharing your story, sharing your testimony, sharing the word of God. Why is this important? How does talking build your faith, increase your faith? Well, actually talking and sharing the word of God increases your confidence in the word of God. It increases your confidence that your story matters and that when someone else hear it, hears it, they can possibly connect with it. 
I have many testimonies that I get up and I share. Most of them go back to when I was a child and I talk about my stepdad and, and my life. And that might resonate with some of you. It definitely resonates with a lot of the teenagers of today. I share the struggles that go through because I want people to know that there's another side, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And so I keep sharing my testimonies because I believe if I don't share my testimony, then the devil wins. And, and here's the thing is this, even if I fail in a struggle, I still share that testimony because it still matters. Whether if it's a good ending or a bad ending, someone needs to hear it. Someone needs to hear your struggle. Someone needs to hear what God has done in your life. It will resonate with someone. So we need to talk about our faith. We need to share the word of God. And Jesus actually gives us a commandment in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. He says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age, teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. Jesus has commanded us to talk to others about him. And you could be like, Corey, I'm not good at talking. I don't know Scripture that well, so I can't really share Scripture. Well, you know your story. Share your story. I'm not saying that you have to incorporate seven Scriptures into your story. I'm just saying start talking. I, um, I have a really good friend of mine, uh, and it's Pastor Teresa's husband, Mr. Michael Knoll. He's not here this morning. Uh, you would hear him laughing. Um, but he talks to everyone. And you're like, that's a little extreme. No, it's not. That's exactly right. Right? He talks to everyone. Doesn't matter where you're from, where he's at, what you're doing. He will talk to you. And the majority of the time that he's talking to you, he is sharing about God. And I've been in public places with him before where he starts doing this, and it is uncomfortable. You start to walk away and hide, and you're like, oh, no, please don't let them see me, you know? But all the time, I'm increased in my faith because of his faith. He's not scared to share. He's not scared to talk about it. He'll bring it up. And then he'll do this weird handshake where he wraps his whole bear paw around you and says something about the power of angels and Jesus Christ compels something. I don't know. I just get lost that his whole hand wraps around my small hand. We can't be scared to talk to others about Jesus, even in times right now where you're like, this could end up pretty crazy. Even right now, we need to talk more than we ever had before. We need to do more talking than the world's doing. The world can't be the loudest thing we hear. The word of God has to be the loudest thing we hear. Number five, our faith will increase by how we work. Everybody say work. Faith and work go hand in hand. Our faith grows when we exercise it. Think about this. If you were like, I'm going to sign up to run a marathon, and you never trained for that marathon, you would fail at running that marathon. We need to exercise our faith. Works and faith go hand in hand. James 2.18 says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. People can see our faith by what we do and how we do it. Your work matters. By me going over to Kenya and working there and teaching people and praying for people, I was able to see faith. My faith 
increased by the work I was doing. Jesus would say this in Matthew 23, verse 3, So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach, but do not practice. You can't talk about this life and not be about this life. You've got to talk and walk. You can't talk about how much you love people and then show hate to people. You can't talk about how what God's doing and in serving you in your life and then not serve others. What we do with the Easter egg extravagant thing, <laughs> extravaganza, <laughs> That's the worst struggle today, then I'm doing okay. It's about putting our faith to work. It's about serving this community so that way they can hear about Jesus. Our faith will be increased if we do the work. Faith without works is just dead faith. The last point here is our Faith will be increased on how we walk. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Jesus said this in John 20, 29, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Our job is just to believe that God has good for us, and to walk in faith with that. We can't walk by what we're seeing in the world, because if we do, then we're going to get caught up in that chaos. We need to walk by believing that God has a plan for us, that it is good, and that it delivers hope. If we walk more by sight, we'll sink. If we walk more by what's happening in the natural, we'll sink. But lining ourselves up with what God is doing in his word and walking, trusting him in leading us, we will succeed. In closing, I said at the beginning of this is, I say practical and I say simple, but I think we struggle with these things. And I think we struggle with them because we can add any excuse into that. We're too busy. I've got too much going on. I'm stressed out. I can't, I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to read. I don't have time to listen. God, my, my day is full of things. Yeah, well, I'm busy too. And if I can do it, you can do it too. I'm not saying you need to spend an hour, three hours, four hours, but spend five minutes working through these things, thinking about how you can walk out your faith today, thinking about what work you're going to do, how you're going to see faith today, where you're going to see God at, encouraging others by talking to them and sharing your story and your testimony because it matters. You might think, man, this story is small, but it is big to someone because someone's going through that moment. And if it connects with just one person, then it's good then it's being used for what God wants it for. So God has given us many promises in the Bible, but I want to focus on this one right here to encourage you to go and do these things. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has plans for you. His plans is to increase your faith. We need to do our part by building these habits into our life. Our faith will increase by the way we think, by how we hear, by what we see, how we talk, how we work, and how we walk. You all stand with me. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. I have one question for you today. If you're here today and... You just want God to increase your faith. 
You don't want to stay where you're at anymore. You want your faith to increase. Will you raise your hand for me? I just want to pray for you. Thank you. Oh, that's a bunch of hands. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Lord, I ask that our faith would be increased today. That our lives would be focused solely on you and what you're doing, God that we wouldn't be focused on what's happening in this world or the chaos that surrounds us, God, but we'll be focused on how you haven't left our side, how you have walked us through uh, more difficult times than this and how you're going to continue to walk us through these times, God. I pray for an increase in knowledge of the Word of God and what you've said, God. I pray for a, a, an increase of um, confidence to be able to share our stories that you have blessed us with, God. Give us the ideas and the thoughts that you have for us, God. Show us your path in mind. Lord, I ask for an increase in our faith and our desire and hunger for you. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your name. Amen.